My name is Carl Palmer. I've returned home to find the son I abandoned in Catrick when he was just four years old. This is the story of that search. What's the name of the receptionist downstairs? Tess. <laughs> She's a lovely lass, isn't she? No. Mm. Maybe we could have a dance later, eh? I need to see your mate and his monkey. Now give me the address. Last chance, baby man! Now give me the address! Oh, God! Feverish display will stop now! Hello, Chris. Carl. Look, we had to give me your address. I didn't tell him you were going to the Mermaid Hotel, so you'll be OK there. Tributes continue to come in today to the owner of Neil's Wheels, Mr. Neil Wheel, who remains critically ill in hospital after being shot during a daring daylight robbery at his premises yesterday. In charge of the investigation is D.I. Fowler. Basically, I believe we are looking for a loose cannon, a loner, a titthead, who believes he is invisible to the human senses. Already hey, Chris, I that's the garage we nicked the car from yesterday, you know. Maybe we should phone the police. It must have happened just after we left. Don't be daft, we nicked this car. We might be incriminated, you know, in the frame. We should get it forensically sterile and return it pronto. Oh, tomorrow. Do you want anything from room service? No, I'm all right, thanks. Well, screw you, then. What are you looking at? My face or a brick? Bring a camera next to... Oh, hello. This is Chris Palmer. I'm currently staying at the hotel, and I would like one of your mermaid burgers with the relish of my choice. And could you hurry up, please? This is Christ's work. So what are we going to do, then? Well, I'll phone Dan the shellfish man, you know, and ask if he knows out about me son. And, well, I'll just take it from there, then, you know? Carl, do I look like an Aborigine? No, not in the slightest, Chris. <sighs> Why would you want to look like an Aborigine? Because I want me boomerang to come back more often. Those chops were lovely, Mum. <laughs> You're the best. Now, how do I look? You look wonderful. You're such a pretty boy when you make an effort. I'm sorry about last night. So you should be. If you're not back for your dinner, I'll be phoning the police, even though it would break my heart. Oh, I'll be back, Mum. I promise. And I might even have a job. Fingers crossed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Siberian Carter. Hello? Oh, hello, Chris. Where are you? I'm at the Mermaid Hotel with Carl. Four crowns and a fifth one expected. Very nice. You all right? Yeah, why shouldn't I be? Your plants invaded the parish. No, no, no. Did you not get Ian's message? Was a right nutter in here before looking for you and Carl. He presented himself as a fairly violent character. Ian had to give him your address. He didn't say out about the mermaid, though. No, don't worry about him. We nicked his car. He'll calm down when he gets it back. Well, you take care, Chris. OK, sweetheart. It's done there. Yes? Can my brother Carl have a word with him, then? Yes. Dan. Yeah. Chris's brother Carl. Oh, yeah. Hello, friend. What can I do you for? I don't do home deliveries, you know. <laughs> no, I, I don't need a midwife, Dan. No, I was just wondering, um, do you know where my son lives? Or what happened to him? I don't like that. What, your ex Judy shampoo? Yeah, well, I'm his father, if you remember. What are you asking me for? Well, it was just that Chris said that you were a nosy get. Oh, did he? Well, you tell him I know where his boomerang is, and I'm not saying. Right, well, I'll have a nose round for you. I know he was working down the old, what were the old, down the old Riley's Garden Centre, but that was a few years back. Yeah, last thing I heard, he sometimes helps out the old, what were the old, down the old Pick Your Own Centre on the Catterick Road. Why don't you try there? Yeah, will do. Thanks, Dan. I say, Dan, you know Chris is doing his show tonight at the Mermaid. Why don't you come along? <laughs> what, the Mermaid are letting him up on stage? <laughs> Bloody hell, have you seen his act? It's a bit old-fashioned, but... Yeah, all right. I'll bring a few of the lads down. No way I'm going on my own. I'm not going on my own, no way. I'll see you tonight. Yeah, see you tonight, Dan. It was at this point that I realised that every single person 
has their own individual fingerprints unique to themselves. Much like their face, their house, or their car. But in this case, there was no fingerprints at the scene. From this I deduced, we were looking for a man with no hands. If not that, a giant insect. I didn't know which was the relish of your choice, so I brought them all. Did your man make it? Oh, no, I, I, I made it myself. I'm, I'm the only one on duty. Uh, look, it's my afternoon off uh, this afternoon, lads, so if you want us, I'll just be in my room at the end of the corridor. All right, well, thanks, Mark. Look, I tell you what, me and Chris are going out this afternoon. Do you want to come with us? We've got to try and find Carl's son. Oh, well, yeah, well, yeah, I'd love to if that's all right, mind you. I'll, I'll have to creep out before the manager nobbles me. That's fine by us. We'll meet you downstairs at one o'clock, all right? Half past seven. We'll meet you at one o'clock downstairs, yeah? Could you, could you make it about quarter past one? Because I, I have my one o'clock dump at... Um, one o'clock. Right. Yeah. Yeah, see you then. Yeah, see you. Sir... We just received information that the stolen Range Rover, you know, the robber's car, may be parked outside the Mermaid Hotel. Excellent, Sergeant Minchman Ching Tun. The fox is out of his hole. Prepare my new Mercedes Benz. Let the pursuit begin in earnest. My God. Hiya, Tess. I've got your scarf. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the dance last night. It was lovely. It's okay. I enjoyed myself for once. Have you not got a hangover? No, I never get hangovers, Tess. I always have six raw eggs before I go to sleep, you know? It's an, it's an old army trick. I don't believe you. You're bashing my backside again, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I only had five. <laughs> Here's the key, Tess. I'm going out with Chris this afternoon. We're taking your mate Mark with us. We won't be back till late, though, so don't you go waiting up for me on out, you know, unless you really must. See you then, Tess. Good afternoon, my darling. <laughs> you look radiant today. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I'm sorry about last night. Please forgive me. I was drunk. I got jealous, but who wouldn't over a girl with your beauty? Oh, leave it out, Roy. It doesn't suit you. You were a shit last night. End of story. It will never happen again. Yeah, it will. Tell me, where's Plunker uh, Mark? I had a look, but he wasn't in his room. It's his afternoon off, Roy. He's gone out with Mr. Palmer and his brother. Jerry! <gasps> I told him to report to me, but it's no problem. <laughs> I can talk to him later. He fully deserves his afternoon off. Good Mark. I like Mark. <laughs> My favourite fruit is an apple. My favourite fruit's an apple. Same as Mark then, Chris. No, it's a different apple. You're yeah, all right, Chris. Right. You go in there and ask about your son and I'll go off and find some lovely fresh fruit. All right? All right. No, it's nice, Chris. I'm just giving it a try. Right. Hello? Hello there. I wonder if you could help me. I'm a friend of Chris and Carl's. I believe they're staying here. You know, the brothers with the Range Rover. And you see, I was meant to meet them here today, but their car's not outside and I wonder if you know when they will be back. A friend of Carl's, eh? Oh, we're in the army with him. Yeah, we served together in the Battle of Hastings. Oh, how lovely. Yeah, they've gone out for the day. They will be back later, though. You know, you might be interested. Chris is going to be doing this it. this is bad, man. Did they take a briefcase with them? No, no, I didn't see any briefcase. Still in the car, then. Sorry, uh, can I take a message or anything? What? 
Oh, no, uh, it's all right. I know where they're going. I'll catch up with them. Uh, no worries. Thanks for your help. He's uh, taking his time getting that fruit, isn't he, Carl? Yeah, he is, yeah. Yeah, he is. <laughs> oh, it's just Chris. What's he doing? Well, he's just staring at us. What's all that about, then? I don't know, it's just something he does. You know, just ignore him. No. Chris, will you get in here with that fruit now? We don't want to be sat here all day waiting for our fruit, do we? No, Carl. There it is. The Range Rover. We got him. Like a blueberry trapped in the pacification of a blueberry pie. My God! This feels good. Yeah, it, it, it's not a Range Rover, sir. What is it, then? It's a VW Golf, sir. Why do those scumbags at Volkswagen make it look so much like a Range Rover, then? I'm sorry to have to say this, sir, but the designers at Volkswagen are not scumbags. And if it looks like anything, it has to be the Honda Accord or the Toyota Avensis. Perhaps they pushed the new after six. If it had been in a Susan Trooper, you might have had a point. So many cars. So little time. Hello, officers. Uh, can I help you? I'm Jeff Hastings, manager of the hotel. Greetings, small businessman. I am here responding to information received that a green Range Rover owned by a master criminal, was seen parked here in this forecourt earlier this morning. How do you respond to this? <laughs> I'm sorry, officer. I think you've been uh, given a bum lead. The green 4x4 parked here this morning's my wife's Isuza Trooper. It's an easy mistake to make. So I'm led to believe. Thank you for your help. You may return to your duties. We are closer to our prey than we think. I have an exquisite nose for these things. Come. So is that all he could find, Chris? Gooseberries? Gooseberries are just English grapes. Oh, right. Do you want to try them? What's a story, then? How come you haven't seen your son for years? Oh, why do you, uh Why do you split up with your wife? I was only young. I was in the army. We spent a, a lot of time apart. You know, I can hardly even remember saying goodbye to my son, Paul. You never said goodbye to me, either. I'm sorry, Chris, but just recently, you know, I've been thinking about Paul a lot, you know, what he might look like, <sighs> and whether I've got a future with him. Oh, well, I should just leave him alone. How do you think I felt living alone with no friends? Just watching the telly night after night. I even had to buy a turkey for company. Sorry, Chris. That's why I'm here to try and put things right. You can't have missed this very much. You never turn up at our man's funeral. There was only two of us there, me and Mr. Trithetic. Jesus, Chris. What do you want me to say? Hi, Mum. Thank God you're back. You're a good boy. Hey, better than that, Mum. What? What is it, Tony? I've got a job. Night shift at Pickering's. <laughs> the potted shrimp place? Yeah. Well, do they pot shrimps at night? Yeah, they have to or they escape. So what do they do during the day? Well, half of them guard the shrimps, and the others make the strands for shredded wheat and arrange for them to be sent to the Netherlands 
I start tonight. The boss is clearing it with the probation. Well done, Tony. Come on, sit down. I've cooked chops. Just a thing for a working man, eh? <laughs> you know, my life is shit double shit with a, a 99 flake in it. Do you want to know what happened? No. No, thanks. Oh, I'm going to tell you anyway, because I have to get it off my chest. Do you know what happened at the flotilla last year? Oh, yeah, loads of people were killed, weren't there, when a woman got her tits out in the eye of the storm? Aye, that's right. But what's I got to do with you, cowboy? Well, you know that uh, woman in the eye of the storm? That woman was me. Well, hold on a minute, man. Oh, no, you hold on. It was the day of the 60th annual flotilla. The crowds were thronging and the sun was beating down on the ocean and the b beautiful ships. I went for a swim in the bay near the bathing rocks to cleanse my aching body and get the best view of the wonderful ships. Bear in mind, I had long hair in those days. As the lead ship approached, the storm broke and was upon me in seconds. In the mayhem, the short-sighted skipper of the lead ship mistook me for a sensual woman. In his aroused state, he applied the brakes too violently, causing the following ships to rumble his back end. It was a disaster. It was all my fault. How did they know it was you, Mark? They didn't. The only one that knew was Roy Oates, the hotel manager. He'd been taking photos of me bathing with his zoom lens. He confronted me as I crept ashore. So, for the past 12 months, I've been enslaved. Oh, this is my first taste of freedom. Mm. And boy, does it taste good. Oh. It's gonna be okay. You're on top of this. Still in the car. No worries. Fetch it tonight. Fetch it tonight. It's hard to tell, isn't it? How old are you? What is your name? Are you an American actor? Do I like you? Look, mate, we'll, we'll just pay for the goose gogs and get off, OK? Maybe, maybe he really is dead. I know, Mark. That's what I'm worried about. We've got to get our thinking caps on here, lads. Now, what would Quincy do, or ONMD, or James Herriot in these circumstances? You first, Chris. Check the body for vital signs. That's good, Mark. Well, I reckon... Um, what Mark, Mark, sorry. Can you put your hand up before you speak, or else it's anarchy, you know, I don't know who's talking, all right? Yeah, all right, then, you're gone. Yeah, well, uh, ONMD would uh, check for a pulse. Uh, Quincy would probably do an autopsy, and uh, James Eight would stick his hand up his ass. That's excellent. In fact, you can have a star, Mark. Oh, a star for note. I'm sorry, Chris, you got something to say? Yeah, he has, Carl. He, he said I got a star for note. Yeah, all right, Mark, I know what he said. Look, I'm a bit fed up with your attitude, Chris. Why don't you stand outside? Come back in when I tell you. Oh, oh look, lads, he's a gas sniffer. We'll get note out of him. Yeah, he's a sniffer, all right. Come on, then, let's get out of here. So, Dan, I went down to pick your own farm, like you said, you know, but I didn't find anything out about my son. The fella who worked there, he was out of his head on gas. You know, he's a sniffer. Well, one thing, I had a word with that old Thanos Gathwus. You know, the bloke who owns a chateau. You mean Thanos Gathwus? That's how you pronounce it, Dan. No, Ian, you know the bloke who owns a chateau? Yeah, but look, look. Port Wednesday in a strawberry mark. Sells local honey. Mm. 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 Yeah. How do you pronounce his name? Dennis Geddes. Yeah, him. Anyway, he reckons your lad's still living with his mum Judy in Ketterick. Oh, that's brilliant, Dan. Hey, thank you. Well, any time I can help, I'll help. You know what I mean? Thanks very much. So, Ian, how's the wife? Oh, don't ask, man. She's the coolest she's ever been. She's absolutely freezing. She's like dry ice. No, she more or less just lives in her chair, you know, in the front room. 
I've surrounded her with fan heaters, portable oil radiators. Doesn't seem to make any difference. Mate, she never complains, you know? She never complains. Hey, it's Friday night. Where's everybody? I want to get laid. Well, down at the Mermaid Hotel. One of the regulars is doing a turn. The Mermaid Hotel? Webster and I were there earlier today, run by a small businessman, God bless him. He mentioned his wife. Is she hot? He's not married, as far as I know. I mean, who'd have him? He's a right dickhead. Strange. I'm sure he said he had a wife. Maybe we should check him out. He may be throwing me a bent spoon. But in the meantime, Webster, let us drown our sorrows. Two Lagers, please. I beg your pardon? Pardon granted, with ease. Two Lagers, please. Uh, it's, uh, it's Lagers, sir. Two Lagers, please. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please put your hands together for the wonderful world of Chris Palmer and his dreams of parsimony? Please. Come on, pussy boy! Webster, hmm? Webster, listen to me. The criminal never sleeps. If we are to apprehend this twat, we must live his lifestyle. We must think like him. We must breathe his stale air. We must become a oneness. A oneness. I know, Sib. I'm tired. So am I, Webster. Pop a couple of these little fellas. I'm sure you'll find them very invigorating. Right, Mum, I'm off. Oh, good luck, son. Oh, I hope this is a new start for us all. Yeah, me too. I'll see you in the morning. Well, he's a very talented man, your brother. So, um, have you got any hidden talents, Carl? Me? Hmm. Yeah, actually, I'm the best cuddler in England. <laughs> I don't believe it. You're licking my ass again. You know, I've actually got a certificate and trophies. I could show you them if you want. Prove it. All right, step down the road. Oh. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, not bad at all. Hello, Death. Mr. Palmer. Has the evening gone well? Um, yeah, yeah, very well, I think. Yeah. Well done, Death. You go to our room and relax. I will take over here. Oh, no, I was just... I was just... go to bed. I insist. OK, then. Um... Uh, good night, Mr. Mr. Palmer. Night, Tess. <laughs> Mr. Palmer, I see you are leaving us tomorrow. I trust you have enjoyed your stay here. Oh, yeah, very much. In fact, you know, we're thinking of staying a bit longer. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Palmer. I'm afraid that will not be possible. You see, we are fully booked. It is a flotilla. Don't you worry. We're going. Reception now.
Tomorrow, you are leaving my employment. What do you mean? I... Ooh, ooh, whoa. That is the last time you will interrupt me. You will get out of here tomorrow before Teth is awake. I won't do that. Why should oh, I? Yes, you will, fat boy. For if you don't, your face will be all over the papers. And you will be lynched. Now get out of my sight. Mr. Palmer, are you lost? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I've got the wrong floor. Um, good night. Let me speak. Let me spit out my bitterness. Born of grief and nights without sleep and festering flesh. Still, you torture me with visions. You give me terrifying dreams. Better I was carried from the womb straight to the grave. I see the diggers waiting, they're leaning on their spades. Oh, you tireless watcher. What have I done to you That you make everything I dread And everything I fear Come true Boy, you make everything I dread And everything I fear Come true My name is Carl Palmer. I've returned home after 20 years abroad to find the son I abandoned in Catrick when he was just four years old. This is the story of that search. 